Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on the Slide Lens, we're going to take a look at a very exciting camera. Those of you who love Hasselblad, as I do, I've got a Hasselblad 500CM and also an ELM. And I've been super excited about a affordable back you can put on this camera and turn it into a digital camera. So now what do we have? Well, we have the 907X and the CFV 250C. So this is basically, this right here is Hasselblad's new camera. It's basically a lens mount that you can put the CFV back onto. But the cool thing is you can take this back and replace the film back that's on the old 500 series cameras, which yep. is awesome. Ever since this was announced one or two years ago, I have just been dying to get my hands on it. Finally, it's in wide release. You can pick these things up for about $6,300. So not cheap. Affordable not cheap. is a relative term here. Yes. I am really excited to try this out. I love the form factor. It's going to be interesting. It's different. This is much different than any other camera we've shot with. Yep. And it'll be fun to try this with the new uh, XCD digital, brand new sharp lenses, and to try it with the old vintage lenses. But uh, you know what? Let's just get out and we'll start taking some pictures. We're going to shoot the uh, pier here and just see exactly what we got. So let's get started and see what we can do. All right, should we talk about ergonomics? Yeah, this is a funny one, isn't it? Because it's, it's a, like a little box. In, it's the most interesting camera I think I've ever used. I really, I actually really like it. I wasn't sure. It would be nice to have a handle every once in a while. They, they have that extension, that grip that you can buy for like 700 bucks. I would probably get that if I own this camera. But I don't mind shooting this way. It's kind of nice. It's kind of discreet, which is what I like about it. You can just pop the screen out. Let me just say really quickly, I like the articulable screen. If it, if it didn't do that, this camera would just be worthless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that really makes it so you can get it down low, you can use it, because you can't get your eye up to anything. That is a perfect setup. And you know, I was worried about shooting on the beach in the bright sun with, and it is a tiny bit challenging, but not nearly as bad as some other cameras that you'll shoot with. A, it's pretty bright, it's pretty clear. I kind of like this, because you can just hold the camera like this, very discreet, shoot like this, like a twin reflex yeah, camera. It's like a twin lens reflex, yeah. exactly I like that. I like it, and it's so small, and I love that you have the shutter release, and you can change your aperture with there's the only, dial. There's only one dial on this camera, and that is a small little collar around the uh, shutter release, and that changes your aperture. You can probably make that change your, well, you can. If you're on shutter you're on, priority, it'll change your shutter. Yeah. So it's just the only dial on the camera, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's look at our picture quality. Yeah, let's take a look at this. I'm excited. So you took all these images after I was gone. This first image is one of the first images we took at the beach when we showed up, just with the pier here. We had the camera set up, and then we just switched the back over, right? So yep, back and forth. The framing is a little different because the 80 millimeter is tighter than the 65, of course. If we zoom in here to Ruby's Cafe, it's pretty close. Pretty close. It, not quite not a shot. Quite. It, it feels a little like there's a little less contrast in mm -hmm. it, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's pretty dang close. So. And you do have a little bit more chromatic aberration in you the pillars. You definitely see and that. Stuff. Yeah. You'd, you'd expect that from a 40 year old lens over a brand new one. One thing I love about this camera is just the, the deep but subtle color tonality. I mean, it's just, it is. It's really subtle, but it's beautiful. It renders the blues into the, into, it really renders that blue into the warmth just so incredibly well. And it's so smooth, and there's no abruptness about it, and it catches mm -hmm. all the subtle different hues of the different luminance values and stuff. And again, I just, this is one of the things I like about the sensor and the way that Hasselblad uses it is if you look at the Ruby sign, this is just a really beautiful, deep, sort of red. Yep. It's not turning, I mean it is turning a little pinkish, but it's not turning, it's not blowing out, it's not turning a really weird color, it's just red, like yep. it should be, like it is with your eyes. Well, look at, at the uh, reflection down in here, that is yeah. just a really nice rendition. What's interesting here is the star flare you get with the XCD lenses. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fun, but you really don't get hardly any flare with None. those vintage lenses, that is which just is surprising. sharp and clean, yeah. there's just nothing Man, these are just... Then I went to 16 seconds, wow. <laughs> which is just kind of craziness. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's got to be, because there's a sort of general softness to the whole yeah. image. I feel like that's got to have something to do with the, the vapor in the air and You know, like it that. got really moist mm -hmm. as the sun went down, and the old Hasselblad just covered with water. The body, the lens, I had to clean the lens constantly, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a cable release, you know, so I'm starting <laughs> oh, it and letting oh, go, okay. you that know. Might, yeah, that might have. That, it might have been that as well, but that's the hard part about the Hasselblad, the old Hasselblad. On that, you have to go to bulb, so you hit it and you have to count. One, two, yeah, three, yeah, or it will yeah. stop watch or something. Yeah. But 
it's older technology. But. From our past tests that we've done with the X1D, we know that you can underexpose this camera by two or three stops and bring those shadows up in post and be just fine. And that's that really wide 14 stop dynamic range at play. It's just these last two show you the dynamic range of this camera because it looks in the uh. original like, you know, it's got a, a nicely exposed highlight, but the shadows are getting pretty deep. Mm -hmm. But it really, in take it into uh, camera raw, and it was no problem. You just bring it up. I just I took mean, three seconds with this. You could have, you could do a million things with this. And this could be even underexposed another stop and a half. Oh, yeah. And you would have been able to do the whole thing. Yeah. You know, two stops. Easily. When you were taking these images of Elliot, and we have the bright sun, it was exposed a little hot, and I remember we looked at the back of the camera, and I thought, that's, oh shoot, that's too bad. That's clipping, we're not that's, gonna get We're not gonna get that image back, you know? And we brought it in, and you just brought it back just fine. It was no problem whatsoever. No problem. There, was there was complete detail in that highlight. Look at the color rendition. Is that blank, pink or red? It's pink. Yeah, that's, the color. Color? that's the color. That's the color. See, that's <laughs> the color. And look at the subtle warmth in his face. Mm -hmm. It just feels like you're getting a true color with this, a, a deep rendition of the color spectrum that's actually there. You know, it is interesting shooting it with an old, a vintage camera. Here are kind of some of the challenges. I mean, you certainly have to look through here to frame. The framing is difficult. I, you have to, I ha would have to take and tape off my viewfinder so I know exactly what is live in, uh, with the digital back on here. Because it's smaller and it crops Yeah, it's smaller. In. And so I'll be in tight thinking I've got a great shot and the reality is it's cropping a lot of it out, out. Yeah. so that, that's a challenge. Also, as I'm looking through here and shooting, it's just, it's interesting to me because as I shoot, I, want, I look and I shoot and I look, and that process is great. I, I just, I keep thinking I want to see it in the electronic in viewfinder, the viewfinder. <laughs> and so I'm missing that. I keep going, why, why can't I see it? Oh, that's right, I don't get to see it in there. But we're gonna look at some shots we did with all the different lenses. I have three lenses, there's a 40, there's an 80, and there's also a 120. And we use the 65 the that 65. comes with it. So just look at the different style, how those lenses resolve. Do they resolve as well as the new style lenses? It'll be interesting to see. I'm very curious. I mean, these Hasselblad lenses are legendary. They're beautiful, but they were designed for film, and film is softer. Though if you get into the medium format world, I don't know, there's there a lot of resolution be, there. There's a lot of resolution there in film, and that, yeah. you know, that's a challenge. So it'll be interesting to look at that. Yeah. All right, so I, we did shoot uh, a series of all the different lenses I have. I have a, an 80, a 40, and a 120. I love the 120 a lot. Uh, it gives you that out of focus background. It's just a beautiful light, a beautiful lens. So here's those images. Yeah, this is a 40. Oh, that's a 40. Okay. 40. Yeah. yeah. And that one, you said you dropped this lens once. Okay, yeah, there is. <laughs> Maybe we should make that. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped this lens and sent it into Hasselblad. I, when I say I dropped it, it wasn't like it dropped a couple of feet. It dropped 20 feet out of a crow's nest for shooting straight down onto the concrete floor. No. Yeah, onto the concrete floor. My, you, my CM, so too. So, like, drop is it an was on understatement. This camera. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely an understatement. It was on this camera. So, it, it messed up my camera a little bit, but Hasselblad fixed it. Yeah, it is. Pr like, there are some weird things going on with the out-of-focus areas. It just feels really smudgy to me. But it's kind of fun. It's a nice lens. Yeah. Not a lot of edge sharpness either. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, it's definitely falling out. Uh, and then here we have the 65. So this is the most modern lens. And you can tell immediately, even without zooming in or anything, the contrast is a little stronger. The edges are sharper. Uh, and then when you do zoom in, it's just a very crisp lens. We don't have, like you say, the uh, chromatic aberration. Look mm -hmm. at those pillars back there with the bright mm -hmm. lights on them. You look at the next one, you can see a difference in that, that older lens. Oh yeah, you do see that. Yeah, you see that green, kind of blue. Yep, halo along mm -hmm. those highlight edges. And the contrast is a little lifted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is kind of amazing, just to go back and forth between these two though, is the overall color is pretty much the same. Well, it, you're using, that lens is doing its job, uh, even though they're yeah. old lenses. Let's look, look at the 120. I love this picture. And it is sharper, you can see it in the back his yep. hair, and then you can see in his far, further eye. Further eye, yeah, further yeah. eye. So that is the hard part about using the, that vintage glass. If you're doing, you know, landscape, you're doing something where you're very deliberate and you're mm -hmm. focusing, then I think you have the ability and the time to be able to make that happen. But if it's quick, it was hard. So let's, I mean, we've talked a lot about shooting these, but I just kind of want to look at these comparisons between the new lens yes. and the old. So here's a bunch of images that we're looking at from 
the new lens. And some of these were autofocused, yeah. and some of them were manual focused. So that the autofocus working out of the sun worked pretty well because it's working on contrast autofocus, which is this is the ideal <laughs> situation. Yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, if you can't get better than this. If you're shooting low light or something, yeah. it might be a little harder. Much more di uh, difficult. But Although it focused fine on that pier at night. It did. The autofocus did. Oh, yeah, okay. it worked absolutely fine, and that was a much uh, more low light situation. But some of these, like this one of Teddy, this one I manual focused using the peaking, and this is where you'll see the kind of the weakness of using peaking, and that is there's no real way to nail the eyes. No. Because the peaking is going to show you a halo around his head, around yeah. his hair, around you know the ears and stuff, but it's not precise enough to just dial into the eyes. I'm doing the continuous shooting, and it goes click, 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 click. <laughs> so it starts to really slow down after a shot of you. But it does shoot continuous, and you know the autofocus or the uh, peaking does help trying to focus, and it really works pretty good. So let's take a look at some of those. It was really hard because the the preview would come on, and I so now I'm lost. I don't know where my subject matter went. <laughs> it so I turned okay. the preview off, and so then it just a black box came up. And it, <laughs> so there was no preview in between. So you're using a camera camera with no EVF. So I had no way. You're, to, just kind of shooting You're just kind of You're just kind of shooting blind, and when you went in that continuous. But I mean, they're kind of there. Yeah. They're in the spot. They're in know? the spot. You're wide enough that you can. Yeah, that there's you some kind forgiveness have to be a little there. Wider, but was the this on? Focus is good. Uh, my sense about this is this is an incredible offering, and people who have been in photography for a long time are going to buy this. Yeah. They're going to be using yeah. it on their their systems that they're shooting film on already. Wedding photographers will start shooting on this. Just because it looks cool, <laughs> if nothing else, I'm shooting film, I'm not shooting this, everyone's going, they'll think you're always shooting film. <laughs> so I, I think it's a great offering. I think it's the most affordable uh, type of back we've ever had that will use, be used in medium format, and that, I think, is an incredible step. Fair. I think, with this and the X1D, as a, a natural light shooter, you cannot beat this because of the yeah. dynamic range. It yeah. just gives you open shadows that you can work with and even holds the highlights. I just think it gives you a lot of options there. It is a little bit slow. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're shooting, it's a little bit yeah. more deliberate yeah. um, than just, you know, than using a camera where you're looking for the EVF and you're just shooting away. So, all right. Great offering from Hasselblad. I, I just am so excited that they're they're coming out with great products mm -hmm. and the, that the market's responding to them and I think it's a great thing but anyway are we fanboys maybe maybe a little bit maybe a little bit I think it's <laughs> I think it's a very interesting and innovative idea and I'm glad they did it I would love to see other camera companies do weird stuff like this yes at maybe half the price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of uh, just the comparison, thoughts about your vintage cameras, and just how you would use this back or what you would choose. So make sure you leave those comments. Make sure you subscribe to the Slide Lens, and don't forget to ring the bell. I just met a, a subscriber the other week, and he goes, I never get notifications. I go, did you ring the bell? And if you ring that bell, you'll hear it every time we put something up every Thursday at noon. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. Hey, over there, hey! little help here. I'm feeling green, man. Come on, come over here. I just need you to click on the 18% gray on my spider checker. Come on, just go over it. Click on it. Click on it. It's going to make me look better. There you go. Yeah, just click, click. Ah, there you go. Don't I look better? You should feel better because I look better. It's that easy. So get your spider checker in there by data color. It's just that easy. Shoot a few frames of video at the beginning, click on the 18% gray in editing, and you can color balance your footage. You get a great starting point. It's just that easy.